Before we start this episode of Krypton Report, I want to take a moment and just give a shout out here to our Patreon. I know what you're thinking. Gosh, everyone's asking for money, and I get it. But our Patreon is only a dollar. One dollar a month that helps us keep the podcast going. And what we do is we try to find interesting shows and topics and whatever we want to talk about. We've done, as of this little thing, our last recordings were on the Scream series. Brian and Tyler, that's me, do our own show where we record in the car, and it's kind of funny. And we talk about pop culture or whatever is going on. We also have the Supernatural podcast we've been reworking. It's taken some time just because of life. But we do movie commentaries as well. It's something that James and I have done, what we used to do on the main show that we've started doing here. So for $1 a month on our Patreon, you can get those shows. There's at least four a month. Also, there's my movie pitch show that I do. But also, what we want is if you're a Patreon, you can come on. You can come on the main show if you want. Or if there's something you want to come on and talk about, we can do it as a Patreonic special. So all I want is for $1 a month, think about chipping in, joining our Patreon, and you have a voice to be a part of things. Follow the link in the link tree or in the show notes below, patreon.com slash kryptonreport. Part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdlife, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report podcast. I'm your hope. Ty- I'm your hope, man. I am hope. I guess. Yeah, you are hope. T- I think. I think that's what we strive to promote here is hope. We do. We always try to be upbeat and positive. I'm here on the Krypton Report. Hope for the future of DC. Hope for the future of this world. I hate being negative, man. That's why even when things suck, I still try to be positive and find a positive spin on it. And I'll talk about that here later. But hey, I'm Tyler. This is James. What's up, guys? So, I'm blue. He's red. <clears throat> Represent. We new... Represent. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? <laughs> uh, we got some news going on. I, I am. I am going to say something real quick here that is kind of annoying. That's making me annoyed. But you know, I'm still going to be positive here. Uh, I get tired of people online who don't realize that the John Kent that's on Superman and Lois is not the same John Kent that's in the comics. That basically took the John Kent of the comics and split it between two characters. Okay, because, you know, there's Jordan and Jonathan. It's not if you put them together, you get the comic book John Kent. Okay, they're not the Jonathan on Superman Lois is not the Jonathan of the comics. People stop. It's annoying. Okay, obviously you don't get that. The originally it was one character, one baby in crisis made two. And then they put it on another earth where there's two. Okay. All right. How do you get that little vent off? So, yeah. <laughs> but hey, let's let's just jump into some news. We got some news going on. Uh, we always like to cover our latest. I'm pulling it up here. There's been a lot of little things that come out the past couple of days. Um, one that just saw today. I don't even know if you've seen this, but Suicide Squad killed the Justice League will now launch February 2nd of 24. Ooh. That just started making its rounds today. Um, I think I scrolled past something like that, but, um, I, I didn't have the opportunity to stop and look. It's kind of like scrolling and then put my phone away and that was it, you know? (laughs) Yep. So that's okay. You know, like by that time I'll hopefully have a PlayStation five. So yeah, hopefully we'll see. (laughs) We'll see. Uh, I I feel you, man. So the second trailer for The Flash will drop April 25th, and Brian's like, I'm not watching it, which means it'll probably be an awesome trailer that will show us something in the plot that will be like, oh, okay, and then Brian will make some theory up that I'll, we know will be wrong because we saw the second trailer. <laughs> and yeah, and it's he'll the story the trailer. He'll go into the movie and be angry because they didn't do what he thought, but he had bad information the whole time. Um, <laughs> his own information, his own hopes. I think the second trailer you said will be more of a story, and it'll it'll probably be the reveal in the trailer of Dark Flash. Yeah, um, I mean, I assume um, story trailer most most of the time. You know, they they well, usually go by a three trailer uh, kind of system. They, 
they kind of gave us a trailer with like the 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 world needs hero and that little trailer thing they did for fandom but then they kept getting pushed back so it kind of got shifted around so i feel like that was kind of like okay we already did kind of the teaser trailer so then they gave us more of this bigger scope trailer and then they'll probably kind of dial uh they'll dial it in for the next trailer you know yeah and that's what i feel like this next trailer will and i okay so i feel like they're gonna be like april 25th and then it'll be like tickets on sale and i'll be like dope (laughs) oh tickets on sale over a month about a month and a half or so away I mean, they just they put the Guardians tickets on sale uh, last week, and that's a month away. So, I mean, April 25th is May, June. I guess, yeah, it's like two months, but you never know anymore. You never know. It's a way of judging box office and, like, interest. <coughs> You'll have to excuse me, people. I'm getting over a test uh, thing. And uh, Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be... Soon as I as soon as they're available, I'm gonna be like, Well, I'm going this is the show I'm going to see. <laughs> um, other little news. Titans are back. As of this recording, Titans are back. I started watching one of the two episodes that they dropped. Um so I won't spoil anything. Other yeah. than this is what's hilarious. Is technically Tybal's Titans once again has been rebranded as who owns it. Because it's no longer an HBO Max original. It now is a Max original. Ah. Who was the bright-eyed person that just thought, hey, Max. That's what right. it would be. Like, we already got HBO Max. Let's just be Max. That is the dumbest move ever. Uh, you know what? I don't know. I mean, with the with the merger and everything and all the issues, I mean, maybe a little rebranding to kind of, uh, you it, know. It, but it doesn't, it doesn't, like, Disney Plus. Oh, Disney. Even Peacock, because NBC used to use Peacock all the time. And even if you don't know that, you're like, NBC, but then that's owned by Universal. So you're like, oh, I can, you can get there, you know? Hulu's everything. Netflix is kind of everything in its own thing. Max. What the hell is Max? That's the guy from a Goofy movie. That's the guy who owns the burger shop. You know, like, (laughs) you know, Warner Discovery. It's right there. Warner Discovery Plus or, you know, Warner Discovery Prime or, you know what I'm saying? Warner Discovery Max. I don't care. Like, it was just Warner Max sounds better. Then Max. And even they're changing the color and dropping the purple and going blue like everybody else. Because, you know, blue looks smart. Yeah, that's why I'm Superman of blue. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just, it, whatever, dude. I just messes me up. Um, you know, but, it's funny. I saw that joke coming, like, earlier when I saw <laughs> the change to blue. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, <laughs> um, yeah, this is and that was about, you know, ten hours ago. <laughs> um so uh, we have the the Max rebranding, okay, whatever. Um there I mean was, it kinda is what it is, you know. I mean yeah, as no, as long as as long as like the price point doesn't change um and we're getting like the quality programming that HBO and you know, Warner puts out most of the time, then I'm happy. (laughs) That's the thing. HBO, there's a Laura, our third podcaster tonight. Uh, HBO is much bigger of a name grab, but whatever. I'm done with that. But um, what was I going to say? I forgot. Dang it. So there was the meeting and they released a 30 second, like trailer for the flash. It's basically like the same trailer we saw like 30 seconds with like, Three new really cool shots. One is a reverse of Batman, like Michael Keaton in the bat suit without the cow. Oh no, four shots. Sorry, one is Batman ejecting from the from the bat wing as it looks like it's going into a spin. One shot is Barry's feet as he's running, which looks really awesome. And one shot is Supergirl punching a missile. I, I was going to say all those that that. That thirty second spot's been taken down, but all of those um 
all of those new bits have been clipped into GIFs. Yes. And are all over the place. <laughs> of course they have. <laughs> um, so and they're we'll... all like a second. They're all like two frames, three frames. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's pretty intense. But it was cool. It was used for the Max big uh, thing they did. Uh, the other thing is Max. People are freaking out. Like they've already said the Flash will stream on Max in the fall. Yeah, that makes sense. Like it comes out in June, so within two months, it would you know would be on Max. Like that makes sense. That's their business model, right? Yeah. Not a. It's not a big revelation, people. Uh, but Shazam will be on Max May twenty third. Which I think is the same day as the physical release. Um, so the, I was going like, to be looking at the pre-order here to 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 pre-order it, so I get it, and then, um, so I couldn't tell you. I haven't. Had, I didn't look at it yet. I saw it on see, the. I saw it on my, pro, or my Amazon, and I was like, hey, because I I pre-ordered it, and back when like it first popped up before they even had like. There was no date given. And I was like, whatever, I'll just do it now while I'm thinking about it. Uh, I saw it. So it says, now arriving May 24th, previously May 19th. So yeah, May 24th, it comes out on physical the same day it's going to hit max. So that means they've, they've changed that 45-day window of theatrical to HBO Max. It's now a little bit longer before it hits. HBO. So, um, I mean, you, yeah, I mean, you need to get a little, you need to give it time to earn a little bit of money in the box office, whatever it's going to earn, as well mm. as, as well as, um, when they drop the di- digital and the physical. Yep. Um, before you get it for what you're already paying for. Um, I mean, it makes sense to try and earn the money that you can get out of it before giving it to the to the masses who are already paying. Um, yeah, exactly. So I'm not really against that. You know, I just I just think it's smart. Uh, well, and money. we're yeah, and we're proponents of a of you know physical media on these things as well as having our digital copies. So yeah, they've already hooked me in. So. <clears throat> uh, let's see here. Uh, Frank Grillo has been cast as Rick Flag Senior in the Creature Commandos. So that's interesting. I like Frank Grillo. I do so too. I'm looking um, forward to that because we we know that if he does get a live action appearance, he's going to play that character. And yeah. David Harbour will actually play a live action Frankenstein too, so that's going to be amazing. And Sean Gunn, if, is if hopefully at some point, Maria Bakalova as Princess Alana Rostovic, I Idrina Barma as the bride, Zoe Chow as Nina Mariska, and Alec Tudyk as Doctor Phosphorus. And Alan Tudyk, yes. Steve, of course, Steve Ag Ag will be in there as uh, Economos. <laughs> so, <laughs> Big surprise. Yeah. So, um, I'm interested. Like, I mean, it's just one of those properties that sounds cool, and we can kind of see where it goes. Most of these actors, I'm not a hundred percent who they know who they are, but. That's okay. That makes it exciting. No, I know. I know who. I know who. You know, the majority of them are. So, it's it's a good cast list. I'm excited. Yeah. Um. Like I said, I like Frank Grillo. It just it's interesting because, like, you know, before when everything was going down, before the change up, uh, I had pitched my idea <clears throat> about doing like a third Suicide Squad movie and having Rick Flag Senior show up and you know, basically saying that uh, Joel Kinnaman was Rick Flagg Jr. Right. Oh, okay, Maria Bakolova was the one who played Borat's daughter in the second Borat movie. Oh, well, I have no idea who that is. So. Did you ever see the second Borat movie? Nope. Oh my god, it's just, 
<laughs> I've never seen either one. Oh my dude, oh, I'm telling you. It's hilarious. Oh, I know who Idrina Barma is. Okay, I know who that is. She's great crap. She looked yeah. familiar. I'm not sure what she was from, but she looked familiar. Um so I know who Alan Tunic Game is, of course, David Harbour. Frank so Grillo. Idrina I Idira Barma. And I apologize if I say your name wrong. I know you're listening. She was in Kenobi. She was the one who was the underground officer. And she was also in she was also the lover of Oberon in Game of Thrones. Oh, lovely. So cool, cool. Um, so that's cool. That's news that's coming. We can reach your commando. The other thing that we got that I thought was really neat was we got a tease for Penguin. And it was a mixture of like a teaser trailer, but also showing us like there were some behind the scenes type shots. And man, I'm excited. Colin Farrell's going to eat the scenery up as Oz as the penguin. Yeah, he's going to be fantastic. I love him. His the and and what they showed. I mean, I can't wait. And um, it was a total surprise. I freaking just got on and I was like, "What?" And this was like when all of this stuff came out. And I was like, "What? A teaser trailer?" It was, it was and I was watching it. I was like, awesome. It was the one time I wasn't looking at my phone. Like I was talking to my wife, and then all of a sudden I looked down. I was like six messages from you. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was all that crap. It was all that stuff just popping off. I was like, "Holy cow!" See what happens to you when I look away. Uh, but it looked great. Like he's very Tony Soprano ish. Um, he's channeling, but not too much. I love the way the trailer kind of did the same aesthetic of like the lettering with the red, keeping it very Batman, um, the Batman ish, you know. So, what um, I did like about it, I loved seeing um, uh, the <laughs> the mother from How I Met Your Mother. I forget her her. Uh, it's what is it? It's... What's her name? Christina. You mean the actress or the yes? Character? Christina she's Falcone. playing Sof- uh, Sophia Falcone. Yeah, she's she is Sophia Falcone. Um, but she looks great. Um, I mean Colin Farrell, he's just, oh, I mean he's doing what he does. Um, it's gonna, it's really gonna be interesting to see him being focused on as, as the the leading role for this series um really expanding on that character Mm -hmm. um you know he he did he did so well in the movie but you only get those snippets you know it's different story when it's the leading person and you're following that character around um you know what what is actually happening you know outside of the only interactions he had was with batman Batman was present. So it kind of sets, it creates a dynamic, but when it's just him, it's a whole different story. Mm -hmm. It is. Um, Let's see. So that's, that's coming in 2024. So that'll be something DC to look forward to in 2024. The other thing is we're getting a horror DC event comics event called night terrors it's gonna be coming in july and i don't know much about it other than that i've been wanting to dive into the dc horror comics because i love horror i'm a huge horror fan huge horror buff i watch it all year long like people are like spookathon i'm like just an average day for yeah (laughs) um i put it on any time it, it it looks like it's gonna be like a kind of a huge crossover, like for every title and every book. That's what I was getting. Like it's gonna be focusing on like the Justice League Dark kind of in the front because it has all of our mainstay characters as part of it as well. What's this and called? Then, like, not, like Night Terrors. Uh, like they just announced it today, so it was popping up everywhere. Oh, well that I think I missed it. You know, probably did, because um, I almost missed it too. <laughs> and then the last thing is Mark Wade, who's like become Deep Sea's reestablished like mega writer, is taking a new Superman comic called Superman: Last Days of Lex Luthor, and that'll be coming soon. That's literally all I could get from that. 
a new Superman based comic written by Mark Waite. Huh. Like, is Batman versus Robin going to continue or is that going to end? Is World's Finest a- going to continue or is that going to end? Because he's also doing Lazarus and he's also doing the new Shazam book coming out. And then he's going to well, be like- doing this last days of Lex I- Luthor. I feel like Batman versus. Well, it's going to be a black label book. The last days of Lex Luthor is. Oh, okay. Um,. I feel like Batman versus Robin is going to end because I feel like that was just a build up to like Lazarus. And so far, there's nothing that's really happened in this whole Lazarus planet thing that I feel has really affected a whole lot other than um, the John Kent thing, which is so odd that you could have wrote that in his own story. But uh, the Shazam, what's going on with Shazam right now? Um, the Their book, the it's been three issues of like Revenge of the Gods or whatever, part of the Lazarus planet. That's been really good. Mm. Is there nothing that's going to lead into the Shazam Dawn of DC? <coughs> but hey, you ready to get some Legion on? Uh, Yes, I am. So we're I'm... diving back into Season 2 of The Legion of Superheroes. We have Season 2, Episode 7, Unnatural Alliances. This got an 8.0 on IMDb. The summary is a bounty hunter from the future assists, sets his sight on a small boy. The Legion goes up against him and discovers an unlikely ally. Mm-hmm. Um, now, first, th- first thing about this episode, we're focusing on Superman X. Other Superman, nowhere to be found. It is interesting how he just pops in and out. They both kind of do. It's weird. Well, I mean, potentially if you've got two supermen, I mean, you can have them on different missions. You're not wrong. So that's that's easily explained away. But, um, yeah, Superman X um, and really testing his um, willingness to do whatever it takes to stop Imperiac. Imperiax? Yep. Imperiax, yes. Um, because this small boy that these, that the, um, this future Maybe. robot, robotic Maybe. bounty hunter, what's his name? The boy's name is Abel. Oh yeah, the boy's name is Abel. Uh, this boy creates the technology that repairs or replaces or repairs and replaces um organic damaged organic tissue Basically kind of the combines the co- yeah go ahead that leads to imperiax yeah he's basically miles dyson if we want to go back to some terminator roots here yeah right <laughs> um so that puts you know super boy or super x Superman X in this dire situation where he can save this boy or if he doesn't save the boy, his mission to stop Imperiax is complete because Imperiax would never cease to exist. And we get some background on Imperiax being a fighter on apocalypse. And that's pretty interesting. We see the boy playing with his robot toy, the doll, but he calls it an action figure. Yeah, he's being hunted by, um, oh, what is it? It's a weird name, but like, hold on, I'm pulling it up here. Tarot Man. It looks like a West Wild West robot. Uh, yeah, riding uh riding a motorcycle, um, looking like Lobo on the bike. Lobo. <laughs> I had a conversation about Lobo yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. Why was he never on an episode of Smallville? Like, it just feels like in the latter seasons, like 8, 9, or 10, Lobo could have just popped up real easily. <laughs> just, yeah, that was a conversation. Yeah. I I think he, I think he definitely could have, you know. Would have made an interesting bit to throw in, maybe even in season 6 with um, the Phantoms. 
Yeah, but I feel like season six, we weren't as crazed yet as we got to the latter seasons. Yeah. It was just like, eh, whatever. Because <laughs> that wasn't the latter season we got Maxima, you know. Yeah, Maxima, Booster, Blue Beetle. Um, They're just like, throw stuff at the wall, see what sticks. Yeah. But, you know, this episode's interesting because we find out that K3NT also created Tarot Man, which I thought was interesting. And... You know, he they're kind of on the same thing. And the reason why it's called Unnatural Alliances is, is literally Superman X has to team up with Imperiax to protect the boy from Tarot Man and defeat Tarot Man because Superman X chooses to save the boy, but it's not the boy's fault that Imperiax exists. It's a good lesson in there for Superman X, who probably should hang out with Connor from Injustice. Or, I mean, Justice League, or Young Justice. God, I can't talk. They can get their <laughs> anger out together. Um, I enjoyed the episode, though. Um, you know, it was it was good to see that the influence that uh, Superman has had on um, on Kal El. On X, because X can give it to you. Yeah. Give it to you. <laughs> Jesus. Yes. That's nice as theme songs. He comes riding in with his super powered shield that like projects from his suit. Like he actually has a shield. Like um he's just like X won't give it to you. He had an interesting like blast of energy powers when him and an Imperiax teamed up to destroy the the bounty hunter. I find him an interesting character, and I, I, I feel like it would have been interesting if they really positioned him more as the Superman of this season. But the, this season feels so disjointed. It, I don't know. like They feel they set it up to be this very tight-knit season. But I, I think cause it feels like it is. But it, it's not. You know, like, Young Justice was a very tight-knit, each episode rolled into the next type series. And I feel like this is kind of trying to be that. But at the same time, because it has an overarching series season plot, but yet it's not as interconnected. Like the first season didn't have an overarching season plot at all. Right. Well, this was still like, what, mid 2000s where. This is 2007. Yeah. I mean, you know, that was kind of that was kind of the way that shows were going, but maybe not animation. Like it might have been animation catching up in that respect. Um, at least trying to find the positive. I don't, you know, I mean, I, I, I don't even think that may, might even be true because there's tons of animated shows that came out before that are just one, one story. Right. Which is fine. That's what I'm saying. It just feels weird because it's like a kind of, I don't know. Anyways, James is smart. We'll keep moving on. Uh, I like the episode. I was grasping. I like it. <laughs> I like this season. <laughs> The second episode we watched was season two, episode eight, Message in a Bottle. And I got an 8.1. Now, this episode has a regular Superman in it. And Superman X is nowhere and, to be found. Yeah. And he's in the you know, bottle city of Kandor. And this is what's weird is, okay, in this, he's from the past, now in the future. But he hasn't interacted with Kandor yet in the past. So nah. now he's interacting with Kandor in the future. Yeah, and they talk about his ancient promise of um, rescuing and and regrowing the city of Kandor, which means, like, Superman has never done it. Yeah, he never figured it out. And then we establish, because they see Brainiac 5, and this is what's interesting is how much they know about Brainiac 1. Because even Superman didn't know that Brainiac 1 was responsible for the destruction of Krypton. And Brainiac 5 says, you know, he had kept things from him about his past lineage so that he wouldn't be judged on his ancestor and all this. And it is because of his ancestor that Brainiac 5 is, is able to tap in the knowledge. And they are, at the end of the episode, they, they regrow the planet Krypton and put Kandor there and Brainiac regrows them and brings them to life and they get out of the city and it was really interesting 
because we have, you know, things like Superman goes into the city and there's a one of the Fatal Five members. And Superman doesn't have he's losing his powers because he didn't bring his power suit because he didn't know about the red energy. Um, yeah, it was a it was a good episode, I will say. Um, but sometimes when watching all this Superman content and skipping around, you forget what characters know and they don't know. So, yeah, what would you think? Um, you know, I I thought it was interesting. You know, I like the Candor stuff. Um, I think it's really cool. He finally got the chance to do it. Um, what's really interesting being like he makes that <laughs> promise to them in the past, but like like he promises he will because he already did, but it's not gonna happen until to them until they reach thousand more years into the future. It's weird like that right <laughs> like it's it's pretty it's actually kind of a a cool thing to think about, but yeah, that's pretty wild. Um, let's see. I I liked it because you I don't know you got to know more about what was going on with Brainy, and it's just it's weird to me that Brainy hadn't really told him that. I don't know. So it's like it's stuff you forget. It's gone on. Like you you just kind of figured by now Superman would have interacted with Brainiac, but he hadn't yet. So even past future Superman because it's. Uh, an older Superman than we interact in the first season, and who's more Superboy, um, still hasn't interacted with Brainiac yet. But all right. Oh yeah, that's. <laughs> I know, confusing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so comics wise, Superman Lost number one has hit the streamer. I read it. Really wasn't impressed with it. Um, basically the premise it starts out. Lois and Clark doing their thing and Justice League need Clark. He goes off. Lois is still working on him, typing and writing. He comes back and he's extremely withdrawn and just staring out the window. And it's, it's beautifully drawn for like multiple pages. And then Batman shows up as Bruce Wayne. So we'll say Bruce Wayne shows up and he's startled to find Clark there. And you basically find out that Clark's been missing for 20 years. But to everyone else, it feels like he hasn't even been gone. Oh, but um, to him, he's been gone for 20 years. Yep. Wow. And so so then they just start talking about how they were trying to save this submarine. And Clark went, it flew into a black hole. An artificial black hole was being created. He flew in to collapse it. And that's pretty much where they end the first issue. There's a lot of them talking about, like, you see the Justice League trying to, you know, stop this uh, scrim it, this issue problem going on in the sea and the mission and Clark went into the black hole. So I'm like, huh? Okay. I just, I don't know. I wasn't really impressed that the idea is kind of interesting, but at the same time, I'm like, do we really need this story? But just more of Superman. Uh, I mean, it's time in life. Well, I mean, honestly, it's not like he loses any time if, if no time passed for them. Right, like, like he still has. Like, he lived has twenty to... years, but you know he lived twenty years, and he uh, uh, he has an entire damn near lifetimes of experiences. So it's it's gonna be interesting um, where it goes. Like I'm it's a, it's an interesting story that you know you would you wouldn't necessarily get the opportunity to tell in like a like a straight continuity thing like. But like you can give him this this grand story that takes place kind of outside of time because of this black hole. Black hole, son. <laughs> um, kind of reminds me of like the Odyssey. I wonder if that will go something like that. Mm. We'll we'll see. But that's the only major comic I've been reading. Flash. Um, I I have officially completed. I'm caught up with where they are with Flash right now. So I have I started it's taking me a little over a week. I read the end of the New Fifty Two, which was the DCU, through all of Rebirth to the DC Universe to 
the infinite frontier to whatever it is now. Um, so I'm caught up to where Wally is now the main flash part of one minute war. That's been my main reading. Ah, That's like a, that was like a hundred and some, almost 200 comics. Well, so when it comes to my comic reading, I haven't um, done a whole lot except for what we have done for the um, for the podcast. And then I had a, a pile of Spawn books. So I had read nice. a number of my Spawn books that had um, piled up over the last oh. uh, few months. So it was, you know, that was a good read. <laughs> Sounds good. I love reading, you know, and sometimes it's overwhelming or sometimes you're just like, you're overwhelmed with not knowing yeah. what to read. So well, you read the new, you know, you read the new books that just drop and then you're like, okay, what in the old stuff am I going to dive into? And I'm, I'm, there's a few other little mini flash runs. And then I'm like, do I want to dive back into Mark Wade's Wally? Do I want to find a new thing to just kind of read? And I don't know. I don't know where I want to go next. Mm. Right. Well, you know, um, I've, like I said, I've, I've done a few, um, a, a few comics like I could there, but then, uh, also I, um, um, was started reading a novel. So, oh, nice. um, yeah, a book without pictures. It's been a while. I wanted to so. eventually one day do the <laughs> Superman Dawnbreaker book, but book reviews are so difficult. Yeah, I have it. They take, I know. They take a while to do. It just gets to be so difficult to do. Um, just take up time. But okay. Yeah, it's a so it's what? a it's a tr- it's a big chunk of time commitment to to read the book. Um, typically longer than you know a show. Yeah. So I don't know. I I don't know. Too much. <laughs> too much. Too much. Okay. So that leads us to this week's Superman and Lois, which is season three, episode five, head on. Clark and General Lane are both having a hard time giving Lois room to make her own decisions. Lana and Sarah have a run in with an old friend at the diner. Natalie has a surprise visitor. And Jania made an observation on this episode that I just looked at her and said, damn, I love you. My woman's smart. <laughs> um, but yeah, kind of open discussion, James. What you thinking? Um, I mean, very emotional. Uh, you know, the, the Clark bit of this, like we didn't have a whole lot of Superman, um, and I was okay was, with that. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of um, character interactions. Um, you know, progressing some plot forward. Uh, the I liked seeing Clark, like, getting, gathering this information from others about the difficult road ahead. Yeah, um, like, I, I just, I told Jania, I said, you know, um, this episode... I could, I mean, I, if they had, if they hadn't even put him in the cape, um, uh, I've been okay. Cause when he does show up and does his Superman-ness and he has that fight, I'm a little, I was a little, I was a little disappointed because I felt like he got, he could have come in. I feel like sometimes writers don't know how to really write Superman's powers and how he can use them. Um, so I really felt like, the fight, even though dude had a kryptonite knife, I just felt like Superman got played hardcore and he could have stopped what was going on. <laughs> so, so here's the fight. Okay. We'll get, okay. We're all over the place. Um, I don't remember what they named the character, but he can phase through things. Okay. And he puts like a device on the computer for the DOD and it's transmitting data. Okay. Superman busts in in an epic way. Why didn't he just heat vision the device? Yeah, standing from the door, he could have heat vision that device and then attack the person, and we could have gotten that really cool fight. I mean, it was really cool, but yeah, I don't think like 
we we know he they, they have his- they have superpowers because they're you know powered by his blood. Which means that they should have superpowers that maybe he has and not these random weird things like Superman can't face like that. Okay. Um, so I'm just like, he could have heat vision the thing, blew it up, even damaged the computer. You're not, I mean, it's the hard drive computer. So it's like, it's taking access. It's not like it's a, a mainframe. I mean, that would have been better than letting them get the secrets that they were trying them to have them not get. So I just felt like, that scene was probably the weakest scene in the entire episode. Honestly. Um, I mean, we do get some cool visuals, like when they're behind the wall and he's like throwing the guy and he is using his freeze breath and heat, but it just doesn't seem like it's really working like it, like it should. Um, and then he does the clap, which is cool, which knocks the guy into the wall. And then he gets stuck in the wall like he shifts and just is stuck in the wall yeah it's it's like um his powers were partially by the the device or whatever in his chest and it was damaged so he kind of like phased in the wall and got stuck <laughs> yeah so and, and then they're like oh but superman you didn't stop us and so I, to me that was like the weakest part um i think the writing on this episode was amazing. It was directed by David Ramsey, a.k.a. Dickel. I think he did a fantastic job. I think Bruno, Bruno Mannheim has become a fascinating character. Yeah, his interaction with Lois in this episode specifically um, w- was very awesome and and sounded um, just about incredibly genuine, you know? Um, he's becoming a very interesting, multi-layered character, and I like that. Um, <clears throat> you know, Lois goes to his cancer hospital and she's having her second chemo treatment and Clark is being the most supportive husband. And I told you, Nia, like, I think like Tyler's acting in this episode of just the subtleties of being the most powerful being on the planet, sitting there listening to these two ladies who are going through chemo, telling him what to expect and how his wife's going to be. And him just feeling the heartbreak that he can't do anything to it. And I said to Janine, I'm like, you couldn't do this real of a story like on Smallville. She goes, why? I'm like, because he's got that Jesus blood. <laughs> she goes, what? I'm like, how many times in Smallville do they like, oh, they use Clark's blood to cure this disease or bring this person back to life. I mean, in season nine, they literally have him with a kryptonite nail in his the palm of his hand and drip blood on Zod and healing. So I'm just like, yeah, that would have never flown on Smallville, but they're playing this so more grounded um, that it's 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 actually beautiful to see. Like, um, so I just you know I think Tyler's Clark is just great. You know, it's the episode starts with him and Sam kind of butting heads on what to do about Lois's treatment, and Lois is so stubborn, but eventually Clark's. He, you know, disagrees with her and says, like, you have to let me help you make decisions and say something about your treatment. And they have a great moment where she's like, tell me, even if I'm wrong, like, I need you to help me. Yeah, because she wants to go to the dance. Like, she she's saying that, you know, just because she's sick and she's getting treatment, it's not going to stop her life that she's going to, you know, but uh, there's really no there's really no continuing everything as you had planned when you're um, full on doing chemo. So um, by the time Clark gets back from the DOD, um, she's basically immobilized feeling sick uh, on the couch. Yeah. Um, It's, it was a great episode for him. For Clark, just kind of what he's dealing with. <clears throat> Last two episodes have been pretty great for Clark. <laughs> and, and, you know, Lois, in a sense, Lois being humbled was nice. And this it was really, it was really humble, humbling to see her realize that she can't do this on her own. Yeah, Sam, I'll tell you who I think was a really great character in this episode was Sam. Um, Sam Lane. In this episode, he actually bonded with Nat and helped her gave her some advice and she called him grandpa I thought it was really sweet 
you know. Um, yeah, that's a that's a curious one. I'm I'm interested in because you know, like part of it has been like she is like changed. they're not. He might have went off their mother, and like they're that. not their so, grandfather. We'll just wait a second here. He might be taking care of the daughter. You know, I mean, part of it was he wants to get to know her and take care of her. So I just I don't know if so. What you think if it's going to be a problem because she calls him grandpa or not? All right, everybody. So James is now back from fighting crime. He heard something with his super hearing. He zoomed off. He's back. James, tell everybody, what do you think about Sam Lane in this episode? Um, you know, I the performance and what he did, everything was great. The only concern I have is they kind of spent a lot of time like Lois is not the mom. And then like they did mention that Sam is not the grandfather, um, that he's not her grandfather. And she called him that. I mean, he did want to get to know her and be in her life. Um, I just, I was curious if that was going to cause a problem. Otherwise, I thought that the um, the interaction and him being protective and, um, you know, <laughs> giving her the courage to go back inside because um, she's never kissed a boy before. And she uh, <laughs> she basically ran away from it. Yeah, so Mateo shows up because Mateo tracked down um Sarah online and wanted Nat's number, but Sarah led him to Smallville to find Nat and Jordan found him in town and brought him to the farm. And my favorite line is grandpa says, You just violated every like protocol I taught you about safety. <laughs> yeah. You 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 brought him right to the farm. <laughs> and you know what Jania said to me when he got out of the truck? She goes do you think his last name is Mannheim? Oh. And I was like, dude. Yeah. I was like, Jania, that's stellar. And then I looked at the cast and I'm like, they do a good job on casting on this. That could be Bruno's son. Because we don't know much about this dude. This is extremely true. We don't know his last name yet. Or maybe he goes by his mother's like last name if we find out something. But I was kind of waiting for that. I'm like, okay. Um, I, in this episode, I really like Jordan. Jordan seemed to be very upbeat and just kind of was trying to help everybody. You know, he didn't do any super boying in this episode, which is fine. Um, uh, Jonathan had the most in this episode, and I really like what they're doing with Jonathan. You know, we have a great scene of, we see Kyle's like broken down on the same stretch of road. He's always hanging out on his truck, which makes me worried about where Kyle spends his time. And <laughs> Jonathan stops and checks on him. And, you know, he says, you know, all kinds of people passed, but you know, you're the first one to stop. And basically Kyle's kind of recruiting John Jonathan to come work at the firehouse on the weekends to learn and kind of mentorship. And I think that's a pretty cool angle for Jonathan giving him some direction of what to do because he has the pull to help and serve people, but not really sure what to do in his family. And I think it's also helping develop the Kyle character more. You know, they're doing some good things with him as someone who's like knew he made a mistake and he's striving to be a better person. Um, I, I, I like it. I agree. Um, I agree. You know, Kyle, Kyle's been doing a lot of good lately, um, which makes you, you know, he's been doing a lot of, bipo which, lately? which makes you what? think like Lana, she did. There was a reason she fell in love and married him and everything. You know what I mean? Like he, he's obviously a good person, but you know, bad things, one thing led to another and it kind of, you know, he made some bad decisions. Yes, he did. But Ultimately, it looks like, and that's where we, that's where we, we were introduced to him. I know, um, he was, I know you didn't like the things that were going on previously. Um, but you know, I think, I think he's definitely, uh, stepped it up, you know, like they've, they've wrote his character very well. Um, you know, changing, uh, Broke down on the side of the road, offering that to Jonathan, um, giving him, um, you know, that 
or questioning him on his, you know, his priorities, um, in life. Um, what he, what is he going to do? And, and then, um, uh, like helping kids start, start the dance, you know, gets out yeah. there, starts dancing, puts on a little <laughs> show, kind of breaks the tension so kids can start dancing and have a good time. Yeah, he pulls Chrissy out there and starts doing it, you know. <clears throat> um, it was so it was funny. Like we have this scene of like Kyle and Chrissy waking up together the next morning, and Lana messages Chrissy, and Chrissy's like freaking out because she thinks Lana knows. One, it doesn't really matter. They're you divorced, <laughs> right? Two, you'd already talked to Lana about a a story in the paper. You know what I'm saying? So it's not that far fetched that she would message you about that. You know? Yeah, she's she's the mayor of the town. Like, and if you're, you're gonna put a story, print a story <laughs> with her as the source, she's gonna. So it just kind of was interesting to me. She's all freaked out, thinking Lana's gonna be say something about her and Kyle. It's not like they're. It doesn't matter, you know. Um, of course, we learned that Candace is leaving. And Jonathan's take driving to Topeka, which is four hours away. And that, you know, he's going to focus on working on the weekends at the firehouse. And that's better for them. And this is them breaking up. Kansas, 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 <laughs> Kansas staying at the farm only lasted for, you know, in between two, epi an episode. They didn't drag it out or anything. Yep, didn't drag it out, and it didn't turn out to be a disaster like they were um, projecting. I mean, they alluded to it when Jordan's talking about how he never can get in, gets you know, he gets cold showers, he can never get into the bathroom. Because even later in the episode, Lois makes the joke about, oh, you washed your hair <laughs> um, to him. So we didn't even have that, you know, or, or like the humor of Jordan trying to do some superheroing and can't trying to keep it from Candace. So I thought that was kind of neat, like just something a little unexpected. But you know what was missing from this episode? What's that? Think about it for a minute. What was missing from this episode? Um, no uh, steel. No John no Henry John Irons. Henry. Not even a line of dialogue about John Henry. You know, and you and Jania's like, once I pointed it out to her, she goes, "You think he would have been there at the Dan chaperoning?" Like Nat's there and everything. Well, he's he's working on implementing things to keep people safe so he can take down Bruno. That's true. They did give us the you know, they did he did talk about last you're right. I kind of forgot about that last week's episode where he talked about going to set up stuff for his quote unquote family, not family. Yeah. With he doesn't sister, want people he doesn't even if they're not related to him on this earth, he doesn't want um, innocent people to be hurt because of, you know, somebody else. That's right. You're you're right. I, I totally forgot he did drop that line last week. Um, so that makes sense. But it still was just you felt his absence, you know. Um, but it won't it won't be for long when he comes back and sweeps Lana off her feet. Like, let's get some dinner at the one diner in town. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, well, good, you know, we a, do like them together. They do have yeah. some good on-screen chemistry. It was a good episode of just building the drama and developing our, our characters and letting us enjoy our characters. You know, a lot of times it's like in comics too, like people talk about in comics, like I prefer like the action splash pages or whatever, you know, sometimes I really like the dialogue and the characters talking and developing the story. And I think giving us an episode like this will help that later on we get an episode that is more just action and bombastic, you know? Well, we're only getting, what, 13 episodes this season? Is that what it was dropped to? Yes. So, um, you know, give us that budget, and I think we got, and we still got eight episodes of some good stuff. And, you know, I mean, we got to talk about how this episode ended. Um Yep, we're getting there. With... We're getting there. <laughs> so let's, let's, I want to throw something out at you real quick, okay? Yeah. 
it's I, I looked it up. It's about five million dollars, okay, per episode of Superman Lois. Okay, you multiply that by thirteen. That's sixty-five million. So that tells me that you could possibly make just you know a hundred million dollar really good Superman movie because they've really made the effects on this season look better. If you have a good story and everything, you could do a good Superman movie for a hundred million, maybe one fifty. I mean, you know, Shazam. Fear of the Gods was like 120. The f- first Shazam was like 100. We don't need to go too far. Well, and, and million, in that, you've got to do like the effects on multiple people. You know, yeah. when it's Superman, <laughs> you've just got Superman and whatever. So I'm just saying, like, you know, the, the budget, like, it is possible to be able to do a good Superman movie and not have like a 200, 300 million dollar price tag. Right. Now, the end of this mo- this episode, we learned that Intergang invaded the DoD and stole things, and they have themselves a new asset. James, tell us about that asset. <laughs> well, that asset is the dead body of Bizarro. So, dun, I dun, mean, dun. they've been bringing people back to life with um, Superman's blood. And are we going to get a revival of Bizarro? Or is it going to mute, mutate Bizarro into something else? I've seen people speculate that online, too. Yeah. But my thing is, well, I'm thinking, you wouldn't know, it be kind of neat? I still, I, I'm, still, I'm still a little bit upset with the way that they handled the misdirect at the beginning of last season when it came to Bizarro. Because, like... He was in this giant suit. He looked like he was massive. Um, Like Doomsday, they purposefully made him look like that. Um, The suit, honestly, you know, I I understand the idea behind the suit, but but making him look that way, and then when he's actually standing face-to-face, he's the exact same size as Tyler. Like, yeah, I was like, that was just... That was that was like the Infinity War with the Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian be cheering you on right now. But, but wouldn't it be neat if the reverse kind of thing happens because his blood would be kind of the reverse of Superman's and it's the same. So what if they put Superman's blood in him and it brings him back? But like it makes him like a better person or something. And he actually like comes back to life and like destroys Bruno's lab and like <laughs> everything. Yeah. Right. So I don't know. I I mean, it could be really interesting on what happens if they bring him back. Because Bizarro at the end wasn't a bad person. We yeah. learned what his mission was and what he was doing. He wasn't really an adversary. So I'm, I just really hope they don't try to go like Doomsday route or something like that. I don't know. Like I was going to really say, go- if they did go the Doomsday route and have him transformed into something like that, I mean, it would be... It would be interesting. Um, it would just be another, you know, it would be another pull from the already DC universe. Um, I still but, think that Superman Doomed would be an interesting way of doing Doomsday and doing a Doomsday virus that starts turning people into Doomsdays. Yeah, I, I, I do. I do think it would be that would be interesting. That would be an interesting story to tell. But um, I, I do think you know maybe either paying off the idea of doomsday the tease that they had last season by kind of going down the same route of you know a kryptonian mutating kind of a thing Mm -hmm. um i don't know i i think it could work Um, if they had a story to tell um we will see no onomatopoeia this week yeah i don't quite see it happening um going that way but I just feel like the, the way they did we are. Doomsday on Krypton, I, I would hope that they would be able to bring something like that into this if they did it that if they went down that route sometime. Sounds good. That's gonna do it for us this week. You know, I'm getting over being sick, so I'm not as lively and jovial as I usually am. So I I, I hope you all will forgive me for that, our good listeners, because. James and I are trying to do something cool coming up soon, so keep your eyes on the social media. James, any final words from you over there, Red Man? <laughs> Red Man? 
Um, yep, see, now I wish man. I knew some like Wu Tang or something. <laughs> <laughs> red and method. <laughs> red, red and blue, bro. <laughs> Ooh, it sucks with rappers. Look up in the sky. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. We're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our reports. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, Keep listening to the Krypton Report.